Well, good evening from uh, Lake Forest, California News. After the election, uh, the first Wednesday after the election, uh, we'll be having a bigger uh, emphasis on prayer time on Wednesday night in our midweek. Just uh, tell us you're watching, check in, so we know it encourages me and things. And you can always, if you missed the last few Wednesdays or last Sunday or so, uh, you can check guides and things. But uh, tonight I want to do a, a Bible study where today, uh, those of you watching in Australia and uh, Cameroon and the uh, States of America, we are having a major election in 20 days, in, in 20 days. And so uh, we could be in a tipping point, a turning point. And on Sunday, let me remind you, at 1045 Pacific Standard Time, it's California time, be having our worship service, we broadcast the whole and then the message and things and uh, I'm just uh, I never cease to be amazed at the outreach and where it goes and how far it goes it just occasionally get texts to the group from various parts of the world that they started watching or caught it and it, it does two things for me it encourages me and forces me to better prepare for the message and also to have it very eclectic I praise God uh, for that so this Sunday we, we, we have one, two, three Sundays until the election, some of these things. And because it's biblical and from the Bible, it'll preach and speak to you in your own country, needs and things. So uh, with that in mind, let me open this up in a word of prayer, and then I'm going to be talking. I'm continuing on the topic of pray we must. Pray we must continue and uh, expanding on some of the other areas. Lake Forest, California, South Orange County, that we can be together and uh, we can, through Facebook and through digital technology and in various nooks and crannies all over the world, especially up and down California and across America, and uh, those of you watching all over the world, uh, we thank you. I pray that you'll speak to our hearts uh, tonight, for I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I've been studying and reading and working on a, a study topic called Good Kings, Bad Kings. You know about bad kings and good kings and Jesus Christ as the king of kings. And after, uh, there were 40 kings and 20 kings in the southern kingdom, Judah uh, and, and things, uh, 40 kings. And the majority of them, except seven or eight, were bad, bad kings from 1st, 2nd Samuel, 1st, 2nd Kings, and 1st, 2nd Chronicles. And the test, I, the professor should have known better, but the, the final exam, and some of you, uh, you know, we've got people classes enhancing their ministry, learning the Bible, and things like that, but the final for that class on the kings of Israel was list a sheet of paper, which was our final exam, and we're to mark, and if you marked every one of the kings, bad kings, you, you would have enough right answer that you'd pass the test with a C+. Plus. <laughs> Hezekiah was probably considered uh, the best king after the kingdom split. So we're going to look tonight at Hezekiah's prayer, a praying leader. Agions, our nations need godly leaders. Uh, in the nation of Tanzania, in Africa, uh, next door, uh, those of you watching from Kenya know all about this, but uh, the new pastor uh, of a church, and he's the, he's the president uh, there in Tanzania. One of the previous presidents, uh, Julius Nairi, had leanings to communism and asked the Chinese to do stuff and things. Uh, what a crazy world that, that, that we, we live in. So we're going to look tonight, pray we must, uh, continued, and we're gonna, in Scripture as the greatest king of the divided kingdom. That's when Israel split into the northern kingdom, headquartered out of Samaria. It was called Israel or Samaria or Ephraim because most of the kingdom was called Judah and they had a little group of people from the tribe of Benjamin. But Judah was the kingly tribe, so all the kings came from there. And so uh, of the uh, nation of Judah before the Babylonians came, he, he helped... Uh, open up a, a window. Uh, one of the first things that King Hezekiah did when he became king is he opened Jerusalem. And that was a glorious 
Solomon's temple. It was closed down for a while, and it was used as a nation. He repaired the temple. He opened uh, the temple, and he led in one of the first Passover celebrations in a long, long time. So he was a, a good king. And so the context of the passage of Scripture tonight is in the book of Isaiah, not Kings or Southern. The book of Chronicles lists all the southern tribe kings, and all of it is in relation to the temple and their worship and the prophets. And so Hezekiah was a of King Hezekiah from 2 Chronicles 31, 20, and 21. A description or a summary of some good presidents, some um, uh, successful presidents, some presidents that maybe didn't have a lot of traction, and uh, of course, uh, American historians, well, presidents, and of course, Teddy Roosevelt is there, FDR, Abraham Lincoln, and sometimes these great presidents uh, <coughs> are, are great because of World War II, uh, very, various things. And I've heard some of the, during the campaigning, I, I've heard president that our country has ever had. Well, technically, that's not true. According to the American Academy of American Historians, Miller Fillmore, uh, and you probably off the top of your head couldn't mention one accomplishment, Hezekiah is looked upon as the greatest king because he sought God, he sought after God, he restored worship in the temple, the Passover, found him to come and do Bible study in Judah and in the temple. And so 2 Chronicles 31, verses 20, 21 says this about King Hezekiah. Good, right, and true before his God. Other kings, all it said was they did that which was right in the eyes of the Lord. Seven of them. Seven of them out of 43 kings. They did that which was right, good, and true before the Lord. Every work which he began in the service of the house of God, he commanded seeking God. God blessed the kingdom with all his heart. Um, I would say that King Hezekiah was all in. Some of you may remember uh, some years ago the Texas Hold'em flip your channels without seeing Texas Hold'em coming out of Las Vegas and playing Texas Hold'em and watching poker games on, all over on TV. And uh, one of the things in poker, when you think you've got a big winning hand and you think you got everybody else beat and, you know, you go all in with all your chips going all in. And, you know, if you lose all your chips and you're off the table or whatnot, Hezekiah, as a king, went all in for God. Went all in. All the 20 of the northern kings, starting with Jeroboam, were wicked, evil kings. They did evil. Worst of all was Ahab. Uh, and part of the problem with Ahab was even though he was the king, he was weak, and Jezebel had real control of things. You had a situation, and uh, she was executed uh, and things. But uh, we want to look at our passage of Scripture from the book of Isaiah, chapter 37, verses 16 through 20. So there in your kitchen table, and hold to this on, uh, on your iPad or computer or iPhone, and uh, you know, got your Bible open, turn to the book of Isaiah, chapter 37. Snatch a rib. I call him snatch a rib. Snatch a rib. And it maybe it goes back to Genesis chapter 2 because God snatched a rib from Eve and created Eve and uh, fashioned and, you know, formed uh, uh, her. But, and uh, snatch a rib and his emissaries, Rapshakeh, sent nasty letters to, you know, to King Hezekiah. And one told him, do not depend upon your God. You guys are weak. We will destroy you. Surrender immediately. And he got, he had that letter in his hand. A letter from the hand of the messengers and read it. It was a, a letter of threatening, saying, surrender. We will come. We will destroy you. Surrender. He uh, handed the messenger and read it. And he went up to the house of the Lord and spread it out before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed him both. And, and technically, uh, you know, I don't want to nitpick, but that, that was only the proper place for the priests and the high end. But he was there for the right reason. Unlike Uzziah, 
who usurped that out of ego. We talked about him, you know, the other time here. But 20, O Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, who is enthroned above the cherubim, you are the God, you alone, of all the kingdoms of the earth. You have made heaven and earth. Verse 17, incline your ear, O Lord, and hear. That word, incline your ear, in Hebrew, is the, when you call out their name, and if they got floppy ears or certain kind of ears, you will notice their ears flop up or move. That's the term language. Hebrew is a very, very picturesque. It's word pictures, pictures in words. The Greek words, like agape and thinking brain words. Hebrew are eye and, and heart picture words. So where it says here in this prayer that God hears their name and their ears lift up and you know they're paying attention, you know. Uh, if you have a pet dog or two, you know exactly. He, he's, we know God is spirit and he, his speaking is in what is called anthropomorphisms. Wow, that's a big word. Anthropomorphisms. Six syllables syllabic. I didn't work on my doctorate for nothing. But I can say it years later, hexasyllabic. <laughs> uh, we see we see here that he, he and so it's anthropomorphism. Spirit, God is spirit, but applies physical eyes and ears. Yeah, God hears, God has eyes and things. And so incline your ears, O Lord, and see, listen to all the words of snatcherib or snatcherib. All the nasty threats and the, and the last big letter. Uh, in his prayer, he's saying the attack, the attack on the people of Israel and the attack on me, the king, is also actually, and today in America, those who are attacking our values, our Christian foundations, attacking our churches, are not so much attacking the Christians, though they are, they're real not with us or our denomination or even a Bible. It is with the living God himself because they want to exalt themselves and be... By the way, that was the sin of the Garden of Eden. You shall be like God. You shall be as God. That was the first lie of the, of the Garden. Uh, did you know that they had... And uh, it had a big megabyte and after that it crashed. Uh, you had the first computer there in the Garden of Eden. It was an bite, and it crashed. Just took one. It crashed big time. That's right. <laughs> oh, man. Well, enough foolishness. Let me get serious and get back to the Word of God, because we've got some serious issues. As Judah was threatened to be under attack, we in America are under a attack. And let me just talk a little bit uh, you know, about the Sinatra and the Syrians that are coming here to reproach you, the living God. And they were ridiculing God. Uh, if you read the chapters 36 and, and the verses before here. Maybe you could do that tonight when you get home or a devotional tomorrow morning or, or whatnot. Uh, they were ridiculing not only not only the nation, they were ridiculing the God and saying, saying that he's not the Lord. The king of Assyria has devastated all the countries all around us. They cast their gods and, 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 uh, who were not gods. Uh, and they worshipped the work of their hands that were Lord God. Deliver us from his hands that all the kings of the earth may know that you alone, Lord God, are God. Verse 20, in Hezekiah's prayer, he was concerned now with glory, God's glory, that the kingdoms of the earth may know that you alone are God. So I want to take a look at Hezekiah's uh, praying. First we see an invasion, an invasion but then we see an invoke. Uh, the middle of the word invocation is voke, V-O-C-A. We get vocal. And so an invocation is a version at, you know, city council meetings when I was in Las Vegas pastoring in uh, Fremont, California, and here he his prayer. Oh, by the way, did I mention pray we must? It's getting old, you know, like the last three or four Wednesdays, uh, pray we must. And why am I saying pray? It's, it's, it's like George Whitfield in our American colonies. He was the Billy Graham of the American colonies. He was a Reformed preacher, Calvinist preacher, Benjamin Franklin himself. And Benjamin Franklin loved to listen to him because of the intellect 
of George Whitfield. And most uh, most had full educations in the colonial world other than royal family were pastors. They, they had education and things. And so Frank, and it seemed uh, Benjamin Franklin even said, every time I, I, I heard him preach, he kept preaching this one sermon on you must be born again. So Benjamin Franklin decided, I'm not going to hear him preach anymore. And a uh, was showed up to hear him preach, Benjamin Franklin. And uh, uh, guess what uh, topic of sermon George Whitfield preached on? On John chapter 3, you must be born again. So after George Whitfield hung out, and Benjamin Franklin said, you know, last time I heard you preach years ago, you preached the same sermon. He says, you must be born again. You must uh, be born again. Well, pray we must. So why am I harping on pray we Because we must pray. We must pray for God to have fellowship and communion with God. And we must pray in these desperate, desperate times of distress and times of sea. So a couple of just things about, uh, about his, his prayer. Uh, we see the nation under attack. America is under our value. Founding is under attack. Our freedom uh, is under attack. Our, our churches are under attack. Uh, they're, they're not shutting down the satanic and witches' covens. It's shutting down and silencing the church. I praise God for the churches across America, be they mega churches or mini churches, that won't be silenced. And in their way, they're finding new creative ways to get the Word of God out. And we at Arbor Christian through our Facebook, as as never before, as never before. They're attacking our values, silence, lockdown. The Holy Spirit leads us as Christians and leads our church. Now, you say, well, doesn't the Bible say that as Christians we have to obey the kings and the queens and this and the president and do the Lord's bidding? We need to be like Dietrich Bonhoeffer who stood against Hitler, and Martin Niemöller, who stood... Niemöller was Hitler's personal prisoner for eight years, and when the Allies freed Berlin, they let him loose. They were going to execute, execute Niemöller. They did execute Dietrich Bonhoeffer uh, right there on the last day, right as Germany was surrendering. But we need him, and God will honor that, and God will bless that. So he sees the attack. He takes the letter and he spreads out that letter on the altar. He won. Uh, then Isaiah, this is the big Isaiah, the big prophet. By the way, each of the kings, along with the kings, the good kings, the bad kings, and a prophet around them. And some of them tried to execute and some did kill the prophets. Ahab and uh, Jezebel had Elijah. And, uh, you know, when you got the worst hardcore... Uh, you, a lot. By the way, you would not want Elijah to come to your lady's tea party or your church potluck. I, I can guarantee you that right now. <laughs> Once in a while, I know how to throw the high hard one. I know, you know, the Dodgers Brave playoff game is going on right now. They're going to have the World Series in this crazy discombobulated season and Every once in a while, a hard one. Bob Gibson was one that was, and of course, Don Drysdale was one, uh, you know, say nice things. And our wonderful pastor, every once in a while, he has to throw the high, hard one, as long as it is from the Word of God. Amen. And uh, I don't know what's going to happen, but the night before the election, I'm not throwing any flutter balls or knuckle balls or spitballs. I'm throwing some high, hard ones. Amen, right? For the head pitches to say and uh, being an assassin of the demons uh, verbally and uh, minimize their power over America. Uh, as I finish up, uh, Hezekiah did the right thing, and I want you to notice uh, he went to the right place. Verse 14, Hezekiah took the letter and went to the house of the Lord. He spread it out, praying and uh, taking our church roll. And going into the altar of God early in the morning before, you know, the, the school kids come and have their chapel and, and whatnot and take our church roll and by the pulpit. And I put the roll under my heart and just, you know, situation and, they're, you know, knowing them, loving them and think those that are new and I don't know that well or their prospects, just general areas. 
And so he took that lead light thing and he prayed to the right person. So Hezekiah was a great man of prayer. I've been doing side studies on, on the prayers of Hezekiah, which is right here. Other than that, uh, he did prayer of just the center of the table for God. He went all in for God. And during this time of discombobulation, craziness, and us being lied to by the media and trying to control our church, and this may be a, a test run. Yes, there's something out there, but I've decided to be careful and not fearful. I, Like I said, I'm not a doctor. I'm not going to give medical advice, but I don't understand that we've all gone insane. Why? Amen. I mean, yes, I wear a mask, and, and I'll never shame anybody. Whether they wear one or I, I just wear one. And, uh, you know, you can look at me, and I'm in that older category, and I have a couple of comor comorbidities. Anybody my age isn't all that totally healthy. I encourage you to live by faith. Yes, there's a parallel. There's a parallel to what's happening in America. God often works in patterns and parallels. We're under invasion. It, it, it is not the military army of China or Iran. We are a mystic spirit in America, uh, burning Bibles in the street, burning American flags and things. And there's two things I cherish, the American flag and the word. No, I would say normal, normal. And so let's take a look at, at Hezekiah and his prayer. He brings it before the Lord. Uh, place for the right reason, went to the right person. He went to God, and then after that, he went to another right person. He went to the man of God, the prophet Isaiah. And here we see Tix. He's hanging out with the king. He's not at the altar on his face praying 24 hours. And, you know, He's out there with the politicians. Yeah to make an impact. That's the book of Isaiah. Oh, by the way, one thing about the book of Isaiah, it's very fascinating, kind of a little inside baseball for Bible students. It's in the Bible, and in the Old Testament, they divided up the prophecy books into the four major prophets. That's Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, and Daniel, ending in Malachi. But the greatest writing prophet of all is Isaiah. 66 chapters in the book in any other place in the Old Testament he used. He is rich and literary. It's just fascinating. It's fascinating. And one of the upper level classes I took it was a Hebrew language class on the book of Isaiah. And I had the privilege for my final to trans uh, and translate and turn that in as, as my grade and did okay. I, 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 actually, I aced it, but I, I'm going to try to be humble here, or humble. One of my professors said that I was the strongest and best student that they'd ever seen come through the school there in the Bible section and the Greek and Hebrew section. Somehow it came easy for me. I, I just praise God. I thank God. Now I'm stupid in a lot of basic, simple things, you know. But other than that, uh, God knows where to put me. And uh, it's two chapters. The Bible has 66 chapters. The book of Isaiah is divided into two parts. The first 39 chapters and the last Isaiah. The first 39 books of the Bible is the Old Testament. Judgmental type books, so to speak, in some ways. Uh, seven books of, uh, of the Bible is the New Testament, all about grace. And beginning in chapter 14, the last 27 chapters of the book of Isaiah is very Christocentric. And beginning with Isaiah chapter 40, the New Testament section of the Old Testament book of Isaiah begins with comfort, comfort my people, the parakletos, comfort, nahamu, namahu, Eliam. In Hebrew it says, speak unto the heart of my people, Jerusalem, the Christ is coming. And what blows my mind as G40... Not a good calendar year on the Julian calendar, on the Julian calendar so far. 2020, Jesus Christ is the center of our calendar. AC, there, there's BC and AD. He's the center. He's the center of 12 after. The 53rd chapter, uh, 13 before and 13 before, the, that middle chapter, Isaiah 53, is Jesus Christ at the center on the cross as the Lamb on the cross, the very center of the teaching 
Uh, that doesn't cost you any extra, okay? Can you dig it? All right. Uh, and a couple applications. Uh, the rest of the chapter, uh, God sent an angel, and they confounded the army. They did not attack any king. God took control. God took control. And no matter what situation, circumstance is seemingly outwardly, God is in control. We see the prayer brought results. It brought rest. He left it. He left it with the Lord. Verse 21, when Isaiah, Isaiah verse 21, I want the big because. It, it's worth writing down at home if you're taking notes or you like to scribble notes and thoughts in your Bible here. Uh, the big because. I is saying, thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, because you have prayed to me about Sennacherib, king of Israel, uh, God stopped them from invading, invocation, and Sennacherib was assassinated by uh, the kingdom. There was a kingdom in tree, and God took over and God took control. Is that God works in, we need to invoke God today for America, for America. I, there are times that I have a good feeling about what's going to happen and, 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 and what not uh, is going to solve the situation and might create other situations, but it is time for the Christians to pray, to go before the altar. Hezekiah did get with the Isaiahs around about us. We see that Hezekiah's prayer brought results. It brought rest. Three. And he prayed this through Prayer changes things. There's power in prayer. And uh, we look at his intercession. We look at him quick, real quick. Just some things that we can glom off of this to apply to our hearts uh, today. Both in our personal praying, our public praying, praying for us. It has truth and application for today. Uh, first of all, we have what Hezekiah had. We have access to the Word of God. Amen. Hezekiah, by the way, when he became king, one of the first things he did is he opened up the clothes, the trash. They would put their trash in there, had the trash all removed, and they. What, and the other thing that Hezekiah did is he restored the Passover. And America today, mutual values and things, they're under attack. They're under attack. Satan hates America hates the church, and hates in our lifetime. And, you know, I've, I've been around, technically, I could say, eight decades, technically, though I'm in the early part of, of one, just uh, happening. I thought it was bad in some of the years of the 60s, but that's a different category. That was a different thing, and it was a temporary thing. I think this enemy, Satan, has got some churches to be closed Got some meta, mega pastors to be silent and yeah, they're doing stuff quiet and, and underground. Up, where's the mega? And he, he says that it's the mini pastors and the mini churches that are standing up, standing up for God. We see that of this time under attack. The Hezekiah's nation was under attack. Turned it over to God, and God took care of it. We see we have throne of God and liberty of access to the grace of God. And what's interesting is after the next chapter, God was restored, the temple was restored and things, and uh, we, we have something even greater than in Hezekiah's day. We have the full revelation we coming into the temple or coming upon us to do some work for God. We have the Holy Spirit permanently in us. That's why I talked about that assurance and radiance and reliance. We have radiance. We, we have the light. We have the full word of God. We've got the Holy Spirit of that. And then we'll pray. Not only do we have what Hezekiah had, the same God, the same access to prayer, the same access to the throne of God. The beauty of this is that Hezekiah acts upon the truth and the word and the altar of God. We do not negotiate with the enemy or beg the enemy or ask the enemy to lighten up for God. And our, our enemy isn't the Republicans or the Democrats. It isn't China or Iraq or a lot of these against the glory of God. 
our enemy is not Trump, or our enemy is not Biden or Kamala Harris, or or our, our enemy. For, uh, so this is why we need to pray. Uh, we don't negotiate Nazareth and the Syrians and you know, like Burger King saying, have it your way. No, they had it God's way. They had it God's way. They. The enemy is Satan. Well, the enemy is Satan. The enemy is not flesh and blood. Ours. There are people in politics that I like, and there are people in politics that, you know, I don't have an affinity towards, and so do you. But the bottom line on everything is God. He took it to God. Hezekiah prayed. Hezekiah, the icons of America, the Lance Walnows of, of America and others, the mega pastors that are right on. We need to team together. So uh, I know I've said, a, I've said a handful, and as we get nearer and nearer to our election, I call it D-Day. <laughs> and thing is 20 days away. Join us in, in, in prayer. I call it Victory Day, and uh, Vic calls it Victory Day, because that's natural, because, you know, he's got two V's in his initials, VV. VV. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I hate to joke and make light of, you know, but we are in a serious situation. But at the same time, I can make light of some of these things, because we will not be motivated by fear. We don't have to live in, and the focus brings peace. Let's pray. Father, we come, and I pray for every person hearing my voice. And, and my voice well important, nationally important in our globe and in our nation and during this crucible, this crucible that we're in. And, Lord, you dealt with the Assyrians. You dealt with the enemies of God, and you protected. And uh, I pray, Lord God, that you protect our nation Lord, that you open up our hearts and God, give us the victory. Let us defend our nation by, by praying and defend the threats that we have against us as a church and even as a nation that wants to bring this. No, God, we're not perfect. We know that. But you're a perfect God and your will is perfect. So teach us to surrender and submit. Raise up. Raise up some Hezekiah leaders, spokesmen, spokeswomen round about us today in our land. And Lord God, 20 days or so, Father God, amen.